Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. Marek, it wasn't that long ago that we were in Vienna for Parcel and Post Expo. And we've done a couple of videos already done, a couple of videos. We've published a couple of videos already about who we saw, who we spoke to at the expo. And then we also took the time to speak to some of the electric vehicle manufacturers. Marek, before we go to the interviews, any uh, quick comments on what's happening in the electric last mile at the moment? I think it's it's a real big deal at the moment, Ian. And, you know, if, if you think about what we would have seen 15, 20 years ago, there'd be almost nothing, partly because there weren't too many electric vehicles. But, but you know, if we were to discuss the stands, I would say that if it isn't lockers and it's EVs or some kind of ecological transportation sort of mode that's represented. So the, the, there were a lot of EV players. We visited two, and I think there were two interesting ones. Well, we might go straight to the uh, interviews we did now with Kubertz and with Paxter, and then we'll have a bit of a chat after we've had a look at those videos. So here are interviews that we recorded at Parcel and Post Expo. We're moving on from lockers to some very smart vehicles, and I'm at the Kibbert stand with Wilfred, and he's going to tell us some real novelties uh, in terms of what they've been offering this year. Hello, Marek, thank you. We are offering this year one new vehicle, which is kind of innovative. It's an e bike, which it doesn't look like because it has four wheels and it can carry up to 500 kg still being a bicycle uh, in, in its technology but the technology itself is really based on the stronger vehicles we normally do the three-wheel motorcycle like uh, products and tell me one thing do, does somebody need a driving license to use this vehicle or can you use a bicycle no, license no actually it doesn't require a license and that is the key why we do this product many posts in europe not all uh, are basing their delivery on bicycle logistics and they don't want to go into scooter or moped uh, uh, infrastructure they want to maintain the bicycle logistics and that's why we uh, have developed this one with the capacity of a large scooter uh -huh. but still being a bicycle and i'm really interested how does this work are these tote boxes how do you get access to them uh, this is a safe locker mechanism okay only when the vehicle is turned on you have the central locking button which unlocks uh, for 10 seconds and you have access to the boxes and you can distribute the mail right from there and uh, when you close it it's locked and when you move with the key nobody else can open it it's, it's a safe locking mechanism wow well, that's interesting so let's yeah. see this this year this is the innovation let's yeah. see what kibbutz is going to offer us yeah. next year at post expo thank yeah. you very much wilfred very welcome and now we're moving to the paxter stand where i'm going to talk to alexander he's going to tell us about something really quite cool which is the almost fully recycled vehicle tell us about it alexander yeah so we are standing now in front of the Paxter uh, Cargo. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, this vehicle has been with Post Norway for five years and has completed its its mission there. And what we have seen is there is a huge environmental upside to giving these vehicles a new life. So we have taken them back, remanufactured them, uh, and we are able to to return them to market with a with new warranty and, and if they are good for maybe four or five years more. Tell me something, what percentage of recycled elements do we find in this vehicle? Yeah, so these vehicles are about 97% recycled, so that's a huge advantage of, of the Paxter second drive. So we managed to reuse yeah, mostly all of the components on the vehicle. So here we are, 97% recycled. Let's wait for next year and see if you can get to 98 or 99, but that's really cool. Looking yeah. forward to having you in Last Mile Expert's Green Last Mile Report. Likewise. Well, Maddock, it was great to hear from Paxter and from Keyberts, and they're probably fairly well known in the postal and delivery world for making dedicated electric delivery vehicles. Do you have any quick comments on that before we sort of move on to more of the grander themes about electric vehicles? Well, I, I think, you know, what I quite liked was that the guys from Paxter are seeking to, should we say, repurpose old vehicles. So effectively use recycled vehicles to give yeah. them a second life. Yeah. Very topical 
in, in e-commerce generally. But I think it's great because a lot of the materials can be reused. And I can't remember, Ian, do you remember what percentage they said of the materials? Was it Was it 90? Oh, gosh, it was 90-something percent. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it down here somewhere. I know that also with Qboots, they're also, some of their parts can be reused. And what these companies are talking about is, is almost like a step towards the idea of the circular economy, where things aren't thrown away at the end of their life cycle, shall we say, there's a way to sort of renew them and make them into something new or useful, etc. If we look, though, sort of at the bigger picture here about electrification of the last mile, it seems to me, Marek, that we've got a few dominant themes when it comes to the style of vehicles. You've got the likes of Kibbutz and Pax, which have got those dedicated electric vehicles. You've got the manufacturers like Mercedes, Daimler, and the like, who take, I think I've got this right, you know, a regular drivetrain vehicle, a diesel, petrol, whatever, and they basically convert it to electric. What do you think about these trends, Mark? And when you're looking at fleet management and when you're making choices as a fleet manager about the future direction of your fleet and what kind of mix of vehicles you're going to get, what are some of the questions that fleet managers ask themselves? I would say it's a, it's a really good discussion point. What is better? Because on one hand, with a repurposed vehicle, you're getting proven technology which is adapted. And of course, the question there will be, how good is that adaptation? And you've got sort of various examples. So you've got an example of a standard vehicle, like a, a Nissan NV200 or the Mercedes vehicles you mentioned. And then you've got the sort of things that what are the guys called Voltia from Slovakia will do, whereby, you know, they'll they'll get that vehicle and make it even bigger in terms of yeah. the cubics. But fundamentally it's the same thing. And then you've got things completely different, which is the the Paxter, the Kibbutz, etc., where from the very beginning it's a vehicle that's been designed and dedicated to serve the last mile. I would imagine that, you know, Ian, if I had a choice, the dream scenario would be to put the two together. It doesn't really work that way, does it? <laughs> well, uh, we discussed earlier this year about the US Postal Service and how they selected their vehicle and their, their new vehicle, their long life vehicle, whatever they call it, was basically a you know an internal combustion engine powered vehicle. And electric, electric v- version was, I don't want to say an afterthought, but didn't seem to be the... the big part of that order and it's since turned into a political issue in the usa because well it's the usa and the u.s postal service has become highly politicized over the last couple of years so it's interesting that they that they take that approach of having those custom built vehicles generally instead of doing what a lot of other fleet managers do which is just buy or lease or whatever the case may be you know vehicles that are ready available then i think what we need to talk about though maddock is amazon because what amazon is doing in designing its own van with uh Rivian, Rivian starting from more or less from scratch to build the electric vehicle. So there are a variety of different approaches. I'm not sure though, Mark, you can say that one is necessarily right or wrong. In part, it depends on the size of your fleet, doesn't it? I think you're right. And um, Amazon loves to reinvent the wheel. So it's very Amazonian. I, I remember when we were setting up the last mile, they weren't really interested in what we did from experience. Let's reinvent. Let's make this really cool, really smart. So, But, but I think probably the reality is that specific use cases will and opportunities will indicate what's best. So if you have a vehicle that actually happens to be a non-EV, that happens to be very good in terms of the, the vehicle shape, the, the, should we say, loading characteristics and user friendliness, and it's well positioned to add an electric engine to, well, you know, that could be a bit of a no-brainer, but that won't always be the case. So I think it really is, you know, in a question of case by case, what is available, what's right, but you are absolutely spot on there, that if someone's ordering 10, 15, 20, 50 vehicles, probably it doesn't make sense to have a bespoke one. If it's two or 3,000 or more, well, maybe it's a different situation. Well, share your comments below. Let us know what you think about the electric vehicle situation, where you think the sector's headed, how important it is, what it means in terms of being able to deliver to ultra low emission zone areas. How it fits in with out-of-home delivery, just to hit on one of Marek's favourite topics that he hasn't even mentioned for today. We've run out of time, though, Marek. So everybody, please comment below. Marek Krzyzewski, thanks for being on The Last Mile Profits today. Thank you, and thank you, everyone.